This is Learning in Hand. I'm Tony Vincent, and this is the show where I share tips, how-tos, and ideas for using today's digital tools for teaching and learning. Episode 31, Spruce Up Your Centers with Technology, recorded May 2015, happens now. Let's give your classroom learning centers or stations a makeover. The collections of activities teachers provide their students at a center can be enhanced with technology, even if there's only one computer or tablet available. I'd like to tell you about some of the apps and websites that can help you set the course for the center, provide content, support creativity, and capture responses. There are free versions of everything I'm about to show you so you can get to retooling your learning centers right away. I created a handy graphic with clickable links to these resources. You can find it at learninginhand.com centers. Get students on board with a center by providing clear expectations and directions. It can be handy for students to have directions printed on a task card or menu board so that they can easily refer to them. You can make your own task cards in PowerPoint, Keynote, Word, Pages, Google Slides. For inspiration, try searching Google for task card templates. Try another Google search for PowerPoint borders or frames. Even if you don't use PowerPoint, you can import these into other software. If you plan to print your task cards from Slideshow software, change the page setup to be the same size of a piece of paper since they will be printed. If you want to keep your task cards electronic, I think Google Slides is a great choice. You can easily share the link to your slides. That link can be bookmarked or the slides can be embedded in your own website. The beauty of this is that you can reorder, renumber, or rename the slides to change up your centers and your web link or website will be immediately updated with no need to relink or paste new embed code into your site. How would you like to give verbal directions to students? You can include a voice recording on a task card, whether that task card is online or printed. You can easily record audio online using Vocaroo. Recording into Vocaroo doesn't work on mobile devices, but just about any mobile device can play back a Vocaroo recording. After recording, you can save it online. Vocaroo provides a web address you can use for playback. Anyone who visits this link can listen to what you have just recorded. You can copy and paste that link into your task card or on a Google slide. When a student clicks, a new window to Vocaroo opens. If you print this slide, the hyperlink won't work on paper, of course. So instead, get the QR code for the audio recording. Drag and drop or copy and paste this into the task card slide. When printed, students can use a QR code reader app like Enigma to scan the code, which will then open a web browser to the Vocaroo recording. While students on laptop and desktop computers that have webcams can scan QR codes using the website webqr.com, it's probably better to simply provide a web address that is easy to type. This web address is not easy to type. I suggest using a URL shortener like Bitly to make the web links easier to type. Sign up for a free account so that you can paste a complicated web link and turn it into a bit link. After pasting the URL, choose to customize the link. Enter something easy to type and spell. Avoid ambiguous characters like zeros and O's and ones and L's and keep everything lowercase. It might take a few tries to get a customized bit link that is not already taken. Want to personally give directions by video instead of just audio? Film yourself and upload the video to YouTube, Google Drive, or Dropbox. Be sure to share the video publicly 
and copy the link. Paste the link into a QR code generator. My favorite is goqr.me. Or make it a bit link for easy typing. You can do this with any video, so maybe you want to use a document camera stand so that your video includes a demonstration. Or use apps like Adobe Voice or Explain Everything or a website like Pixie Clip to create slideshows and screencasts. However you make the video, get it online and paste the web address into a QR code or into Bitly. Another way to provide directions is to use a snap guide or Learnus board. These sites and their apps are designed to make it easy to give step-by-step -step directions, which can include hyperlinks, photos, and videos. Each guide or board you create has its own web address, so if you use this at a center, you can create a QR code or bit link for it. Whichever way you choose to set the course for your center, remember that directions should be clear and concise. Write or speak in student-friendly language. Set clear expectations so that students can work without needing to interrupt the teacher, who is probably working with other students. Above all, Get students excited for what they're about to learn and do at the center. There are lots of sources of digital content you might incorporate into a center. For instance, you might have students listen to a story at Unite for Literacy. This website works on desktop computers and in mobile browsers. Unite for Literacy has dozens of free storybooks for students in primary grades. Students can click to hear the narration for each page. There are other sites with online storybooks that can be read to students. Unfortunately, many of them require Flash, so they won't work on tablets. For older students, there are some really great news and information sites that are updated frequently. Take Wonderopolis, for example. Each day, the site features a wonder of the day. Each wonder is an intriguing question that is answered with informational text, accompanied by a related video. Each wonder has a picture gallery, vocabulary list, short quiz, and a listen button. You can browse through hundreds of wonders, find a wonder by grade level and subject matter, or do a search. CNN Student News has a new 10-minute video each school day. It's designed for use with middle and high school classrooms. Newzella is designed to build reading comprehension with daily news stories. Every article has five different versions, from low to high lexile levels. When you assign centers, you can indicate which level a student should select. Each level of an article has its own web address, so you can even send students directly to the version that you want them to read. Newzella does require the teacher to sign up for a free account, from which they can then sign up their students. PBS Learning Media, The Kids Should See This, Student News Daily, and Time for Kids are some other information sites written for students. Now, perhaps as part of the center's activities, you want students to visit multiple websites. Or maybe you want to offer students a selection of sites, articles, or videos to choose from. One handy way to collect web links onto one page is by making a blend space. With blend space, you can organize web resources into one place. You can also insert text directions and quizzes right into your collection. There are lots of other options for gathering web links onto one page. These include Symbaloo, EduClipper, and Listly. And of course, if you have your own website, you could create a page with links for your center. If you have a video you want students to watch as part of the center, consider breaking up the video into clips and adding some interaction. Watching shorter clips with time for thinking and review is more effective than simply watching one long video. 
With Zaption, you can trim a YouTube video and add pauses to the video and insert annotations and questions. Similar to Zaption is Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle gives you editing tools that include the ability to add voice recordings to the video. And that's in addition to embedding quizzes. If your students have access to tablets for centers, then there are hundreds of thousands of apps with content that might align to the objectives for your center. And it's often hard to find those apps by searching the App Store or Google Play. Instead, try using an educational app directory or review site. I've had lots of luck doing Google searches. Google for the concept or the standard along with the word app. Doing this often leads me to a blog post by a teacher who has used the app with her students. Pinterest is also another great place to search for content-specific apps. Passively reading, listening, or watching isn't nearly as effective or engaging as doing something active. Centers work best when students are active learners. To build in accountability for the time students spend at a center, consider having students actively creating something with the content or skills they are learning or practicing at the center. One thing students might create is a mind map. Mind maps might be on paper. But there are lots of free ways to make digital mind maps. Web-based options include Poplet, Google Drawings, and Slatebox. App options include Poplet, Idea Sketch, and Simple Mind. Students could create info pics as part of a center. An info pic is a photo or screenshot with text layered on top that is designed to communicate a message. The message might be a summary or reflection about a story, article, vocabulary word, app, experiment, or any activity really. There are a growing number of websites and apps for enhancing photos and adding text. Pixlr is a great one to get started with. It's free and has loads of free effects. There are Pixlr apps for just about any device. And Pixlr Express is web-based and does not require any sign-in to use it. Watch Learning in Hand number 30 because it's all about producing info pics. Many students may have much more to say than they can write. On Chromebooks, PCs, and Macs, students can record their voices using web tools, including Vocaroo, Blabberize, Pixie Clip, and ThingLink. And ThingLink is also available as a mobile app. Other iPad apps where students can record their voice include Shadow Puppet EDU, Chatter Picks Kids, and Adobe Voice. Voice recording in the classroom is tricky. During center time, chances are there's a mini lesson happening and plenty of background noise. Maybe students can go outside of the classroom to record. If that's not possible, buy or construct your own recording booth. You can buy acoustic foam tiles online and adhere them inside of a box. Or you could make one with styrofoam. A student can put his iPad right inside the soundproof box to reduce background noise and eliminate echoes. To record student voices, you don't even need to install an app. On mobile devices, you can keep it simple by having students record a selfie video using the mobile device's built-in camera. When it comes to planning a center, you might specify a specific app or tool or give students a choice of what they can create. I maintain a graphic called Show What You Know using web and mobile apps. You'll find plenty of tools students can use to demonstrate their learning. The graphic is available at learninginhand.com slash show. After students have created their learning artifacts, what's next? Well, you'll probably want to assess it. 
Maybe you'll want to share it with the rest of the class or publish it online. Let's look at some ways to capture your students' responses. Maybe you already have a course management system like Google Classroom, Edmodo, or Schoology. If so, that's a great place to have students upload their files or paste links to their creations. Or maybe you just want students to type a reflection or summary. You can do that in a management system or use a Google Form. You can make a Google Form and share the link with students. Students do not need to log in to any kind of account to complete a form. You can ask for their name or let students choose their names from a list. Then you can ask any combination of multiple choice, checkbox, scale, and open-ended questions. All responses are collected into a spreadsheet. Each entry has a date and time stamp so you know exactly when it was submitted. So, you could make a very general Google Form to use with multiple centers. Or, you can go ahead and make multiple Google Forms, one for each specific center. And you can't upload a file to a Google Form, at least not when I recorded this video. You can collect images, video files, and web links from students using Padlet. It's a website where you create an online bulletin board. Students don't need to sign in to use it. They just double-click the background to begin a new post. You can make as many walls as you like, so you could have one for each center. On a mobile device, students can instantly snap a photo and add it to a wall. This is a very handy way to collect handwriting, drawings, and other physical creations that were made as part of a center. I suggest that you set your Padlet wall to moderate posts so that students' posts won't show up until you approve them. This way students won't just copy what they've seen other students post. Watch Learning in Hand number 26 to learn all about Padlet. Another way to upload files without having to log in includes dropit2.me. It provides a web form students can use to upload into a teacher's Dropbox account. Students will need to type in a shared password in order to upload. And it doesn't work to upload photos from an iPad or iPhone because those photos end up replacing each other. But it sure is nice to have files automatically placed in Dropbox. Another way to capture student work is to put it into a blog or portfolio. Maybe your students already post to their own kid blog. It's a blogging platform made for teachers and students. Seesaw is an iPad app. It's easy for students to add artifacts by taking photos of their work or uploading files from the camera roll. Or they can add drawings, notes, and web links. Students can even add voice comments to their photos to explain, clarify, or reflect on their work. The teacher will need to create a Seesaw account, but then the teacher can add student names to their account. It's easy for students to add their own artifacts, but the teacher can do it from her iPad as well. Or if you only have one iPad, students can borrow that iPad to capture their work. Currently, Seesaw is iPad only. Three Ring is another digital portfolio choice and supports iOS, Android, Fire, desktops, and laptops. Like Seesaw, students and teachers can capture media, including photos, videos, notes, and audio. Artifacts can be accessed in the app and online at threering.com. As part of a center, students could contribute to a collaborative document. You could share a Google slideshow where each student gets his or her own slide. Of course, this also works with spreadsheets and documents. After all students have rotated through the center, you have a slideshow or document with contributions from everyone in your class. Now, effective centers don't require technology. Yarn, felt, sand, manipulatives, and such are awesome. But sometimes you might want to sprinkle in some tech, which can help set the course, 
provide content, support creativity, and capture responses. That's it for episode 31. Remember, you can find my resources for sprucing up your centers at learninginhand.com centers. And that's the website where you can contact me about leading a workshop at your school or event. I'd love to teach you in person. As always, thanks for supporting my work and thanks for watching.